hello, it's me again. You know what? Today I'm going to do a shorter video. I think my videos are too long, so um, instead of breaking them up, I'm going to try and do things a little bit differently. So hopefully I don't go too long with this one. It is on paint blending, and I know a lot of you are trying to learn paint blending that are trying to do your own furniture pieces. Um, a lot of our um, followers on on Facebook are um, other paint painters so um, because furniture painting is you know it's a huge thing now I mean why make why waste a perfectly good piece of furniture when you can paint it so um, I'm gonna try and do shorter videos and I'm going to try to do specific content videos that are like five to ten minutes long as well so they're not too boring so I'm sorry if I've bored you bored you before it's come to my attention from a family member that um, I might be a little bit boring so I apologize uh, anyway so today I'm going to do some furniture, little uh, chest of drawers I got. It's a four drawer. It's probably, now I don't know when these came out. I think probably the 80s or 90s. I'm guessing 80s, somewhere around there. Um, they're usually wood, but they have um, usually a laminate top, which is not all that great, but you can work with it. I'll show you why. And um, they, they have really cool handles though, or they have really cool embellishments that are a resin um, embellishment that gets put on them this one doesn't so much I like the drawers on it that they're inset and I like the handles on it was really really cool so I thought you know that would be a great guy's dresser so I am doing this dresser for a man's bedroom um, hopefully that's who will buy it in the end and it is pretty neat so I think you'll like it I want to show you the handles on this but before I get started I would really appreciate if you have friends that you know would be interested in watching our videos or learning to paint to share our videos like our videos then go all the way over to YouTube and like the, us there and subscribe there so that we can begin to build up our viewership as well YouTube and Facebook are really funny they get to a certain point before they even recognize you on the face of the earth so even though I, I provide some pretty good top content, it still boils down to the likes and subscribes and follows and all that stuff. So, um, but our channel is Flandrance Interiors on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. And also you can visit our webpage. We have a lot of really good information on there about decor. And I will be loading some more of our pictures there too. Okay, so this piece, look at it. This is the first coat. Um, and what I've done is I've sanded the top. So this top is laminate. Um, I've sanded it with a 150 grit to get a really good cut into the laminate. So as long as you, as long as you can scratch up the laminate really well, um, you don't need to use any adhesive bonding agent like ultra grip or anything. If you have laminate and you can really scratch it up well with um, I used my orbital sander with 150 grit for uh, like maybe three minutes, really did it well. Then you're fine. You're fine to do your painting over top. It will stick. And um, Fusion is really good about sticking to anything really. So, but um, that's what the top is. Now I have done one really thick coat on the top. I generally don't do thick coats of paint, but I did a really thick coat on the top. Then I'm going to take their gray driftwood stain and I'm going to not, I'm going to just lightly sand this with like a 400 grit to get any of the nubs off from painting. But then I'm going to take their stain and that's what I'm going to use for my top coat this time. Instead of putting a polycrylic or, or their top coat on it, um, I'm going to use their stain and finishing oil, which will give it a beautiful deeper gray stain, but it will also give it a finish, a really um, lush finish and an oil, oil based finish to it like if I were putting on a gel stain or something. So that's what I'm doing to the top. So here I have the same ash, but I did um, a coat of ash all around here and all around the very inside here. And I'm gonna bring you forward a bit. Um, all around the inside here as well. And then what I did was I took a color called putty and it's also a fusion mineral paint color. Hi there. Um, and I took the putty and I <clears throat> just put a little bit, a little bit on here, um, a little bit in here, and then I blended the two together. So this is the first coat of blending. And if you've watched any of my blending before, um, you know that I call myself a messy blender because I just really am a messy blender. I don't have any 
great skill at this <laughs> at all. I just do my best. But you know what it turned into was this really cool steely gray color and I love that. I mean, I was so surprised. Check out these colors. This is what we're using. <clears throat> so this is ash. It's almost a black gray. Um, that's what the top is. And then I've used it around here and a little bit on the inset in here. You can see the darkness here. So you can do this darkness afterwards with black wax too, if you wanted to do it with just black wax, but I use the paint to do that. But then look at this color. This color is so light, you'd never know that's on there. But what it did with these two colors, um, this is putty from Fusion Mineral Paint, and it's a really, I'd say mid to light gray, um, but these two colors made this beautiful steely gray blue color. It's just amazing. I mean, I'm amazed lately at what blending is. So that's the colors we're using. Um, what I'm going to do is a bit of the drawers today. And I wanted to show you the handles that go on this thing because I love these handles. And normally I paint out the handles to make them a different color and kind of freshen them up. But check this out. These handles are perfect. The, the color is like this, so they're a bit of the bronzy black kind of thing. These are the top ones. This has a little bit more brass than I would want, but you know what? They go perfectly with this piece now. Like, look at that. I couldn't have chosen any better if I tried to. This is the next one down, which is a really long bar type. But look how beautifully these go. So I am not doing anything except giving them a little bit of a wash and dry um, with just soapy rag that's it and then I'm putting them back on because I think they're gonna look super cool on this piece so this piece doesn't have a whole lot of the resin bits on it like some of them do like um, the one I did it a little bit ago but it does have these and I will probably put a little bit of uh, wax dark wax around here um, just on these when I'm all done so let's get to the painting and stop the talking here. so I have got um, two pots of paint, one with the ash, and I just have to grab one little thing here. I need to get a little box to put my paints on so I can keep using them without um, spilling them all. I hope that works. Maybe not. That's not a very stable box, is it? Okay, we'll scrap that then. <laughs> Let's just go to a cloth. How about that? We'll use the cloth. Okay, so what I'm what I'm using also is <clears throat> um, when you do blending, you use color. In this case, we have two colors, ash and putty. So I'm going to use this for ash because I'll be using a lot of that, and it's got the um, angled tip so that I can get right up into these corners really nicely. And then I'm using this for the putty. It's a one inch flat. These are both Premier brand um, brushes. I really like them because they have these split ends on them, the really soft split ends, and they're just beautiful. Then I have a um, two inch or three inch, two and a half inch, I guess it is, uh, Bennett brand brush, um, which is a really, I, I use this just for uh, fluffing and blending. That's strictly what I use it for. So I've got one brush for each color, and then I've got the blending brush. Now what I'm going to do is move you guys over. Um, the other thing you'll need is a spritz of water. So when you're blending, one of the keys to blending is water, 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 water. Fusion paint is an acrylic paint. It's not a chalk paint. So it, it tends to not blend as easily, but it just requires water and a little bit more paint. So, um, and that's pretty much all it is. So if you have the water, the brushes, and the blending brush, you're good to go. Um, okay, let's switch you guys places here. I'm gonna move this over here, up here, and my little tray over here. Uh, I had this out a little bit earlier in a different spot, but then I realized the sun was shining on it, and I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, Got a good bead on it, so <clears throat> let's see where you're at here. It's very bright and sunny in here today, which is really nice, but it might be a little bit too bright. Okay, I think that's a pretty good line on it. I'll try not to run into anything with my 
my feet. Okay, I kind of want to get the whole thing in there. So what I did up here, um, first of all, is I painted the whole frame out in the gray. So this whole frame is just the ash, that's the dark gray that we're using. And I took the drawers out, I painted in, in here. These drawers fit over top of the frame, so when you pull the drawer out, you don't see this part, so I didn't have to paint. Um, can you see, see that even? I didn't have to paint right in here like I usually do because you can't see this when the door is open, but you can see a little tiny bit of this bar. So I painted everything in the frame, uh, the dark gray. Okay, now let's see if we can get this thing back in. Kind of tricky sometimes to get drawers back in, I have to say. <laughs> so one of the keys with doing a second round of blending is um, the paint is super dry. So if I put, just paint on it right now it's going to be pretty dry and it's going to you know not not slide around as well as i would really like it to for blending so what i'm going to do is i'm going to give it a tiny little spritz of water just around the frame not much just like that and then that will it, it won't do anything to your paint but it'll allow the the paint color that i'm putting on it to then um, really slide around well because if you have slippery paint and you're trying to do blending with slippery paint you might as well or not slippery I mean uh, sticky paint um, you might as well give up because it's just really really hard so I'm just going to go in this very I want this outline to be dark in here right so I'm doing my outline where I want it to be a bit darker that's pretty, pretty fast. And I'll try to speed up so that I can do this faster and get you guys off my video so that you can enjoy your day and not be listening to me all day. Um, okay. Now, I don't necessarily have to do the bottom again, but I'm going to just give it one little stripe down there. So that's my outline for blending right there. Then I'm going to take my... Um, little flat brush my one inch flat brush and I'm just gonna go in here that might even be a bit too much um, but I'm going to try and equal it out on this side it's a little bit too much here I think and like I say I don't really care how I get it on I care how I get it off so paint is funny you can put it on a hundred different ways but how you take it off is important because that will give you the look you're going for and you want to have also one um, rag that you really don't care wrecking because in between you want to just keep. So it's got a little bit of dampness here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just smooth this out up here. I don't really want it blue, more blue up there anymore. But as I go in here, it's going to pull some of the color down. Now, so this is what happens with fusion paint when you blend. It tends to want to get just sticky like that. Do you see that? And it won't do anything. And that's where most people go into their closet and cry their eyes out because they can't make it do anything. So all you have to do is give it a shot. And I mean, if you could see this, that shot of water, this is a hairdressing mystery. You can get them at hairdressing stores. You can get them on Amazon. That's literally what they're called. The mist is super fine. So now if I go back up here, and even there the paint's a little dry. Um, if I go back up and I start to blend it and I give it a little shot of water again, I'm going to give it a little bit more paint. Now that my surface is wet enough for the blending, I'm going to give it another little bit of paint here because there's just not quite enough. That's the other key to blending is enough paint. You have to have enough paint to allow it to even blend in the first place. So now let's try it. Now you can see it's blending. You see that? So we'll just keep going. And I don't want to get too much on the outside frame here, but if I do, I'm just going to go back with my ash color and fix it. So this is going along swimmingly. So I've got a bit more on this side than I did, or on this side than I do on this side. So I'm going to give it a titch more. Now my surface is still damp. 
And I'm not worried about going in here. You can see how it's making a natural black line. I wanna keep that. I don't wanna cover that up. Okay, get a little bit down in here. Once I get it to kind of where I think I've blended it well enough or I've got the look I want, you can even go this way, blend it sideways and then back. But once I've got it to where it's the look I want, um, and I know I want to keep this frame fairly ash, I'm just going to go back and touch up any bits that I hit with the white because I really don't want it really that white down there. So that's about it for that one. Pretty simple. Um, I can even go in here again and touch up that line. So now by doing that, I've picked up a bit of white on my brush. So I'm going to just wipe my brush off and get any contaminated color off there. I do not want. So now it's left it with this, um, this coloring. And then in the end, what I will do is take black wax and I will go over this whole bit in here to kind of accent these pieces here that are not quite as dark as I would like them, but I don't want to go on it with paint right now. Um, I'm just going to leave it and do that at the very, very end with the black wax. Okay. And the black wax will actually cover up a lot of, a lot of things, but that's okay. That's kind of how I want it. Now, when this dries, like I said, it, it, it's drying like a blue jean blue color. It's amazing. It's ash and putty, um, which are two colors, surprisingly, that um, uh, turn to this like steely blue color. And I really, really like it, actually. So I'm going to spritz my teeth again. Get a little bit of paint on my brush. And go around this outside edge again. Go across the top. It's easy to go across the top like this, adding it across the top, and then just smooth it that way. It kind of catches everything a little bit better than going at it the other way. Go down here. down at the bottom, and I don't really have to do the bottom, but I will. And I'm gonna go in here as well. Get this here, put in another swoosh of paint. So now I'm creating my, my outline <clears throat> um, with the ash, um, and I'm doing just this outline in here. So I've got my outside frame painted, but now I'm doing this black outline in here. And I wanna come in about an inch on the end here. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Your line, your line doesn't have to be perfect, but if you're doing a square drawer like, or a rectangle drawer like this, try to get your line at least fairly decent. Another strip of water and then a strip of the white paint. And I'm uh, sorry, this isn't even white paint. It looks like it, doesn't it? It's called putty. It's a fusion mineral paint called putty. But it literally <clears throat> um, looks like it's white when it goes on. It's really quite a pretty color. So I'm just going to blend this out. And I can tell just um, feeling it right now. I'm blending up and down here. Um, I can tell blending it right now that it's wet enough that I can work with it. So the reason I just went up and down is because sometimes blending across on a large surface like this, your paint dries out too fast. So I want to get it in the up and down motion to blend it really well before I go back and level it out like this. My drawer is sneaking back in on me. And then I'm going to check and I'm going to see, okay, is that, does that look how I want it to look? Because this is going to be how it dries. And I kind of like that, but now I've got paint in here again um, that I don't want. So I'm going to go, whoop. Oh, my water bottle just broke. I'm going to go back here with the gray, a little bit of gray, and I'm just going to touch this up. It's a little bit tricky when you're doing a frame like this, but it is doable. Okay. And if I really, really, really want it dark in the end, I can go over it with black wax and cover that up too as well. Okay. 
Okay. So this is my second coat of the um, ash and the putty. Okay. So that looks pretty good. I like that color. It's pretty neat, isn't it? Hi, Lenore. Hi, Norm. Okay, let's do one more. It's a little bit tricky doing this um, on camera like normally I would be down on the ground, <laughs> down on the floor getting this low. But if you guys can see this, okay, so we'll start with our ash color. Oh, I'm going to spray my... See, all of a sudden I realized my drawer feels really, really dry. So then I realized that I don't have my, my paint color or my water on before my paint color. Okay, so I'm going to go this way first. And then I'm going to smooth that out. If I get any behind there, I'm going to take my finger like that or a cloth and just wipe behind that. I did get a little bit in there. Okay, so let's go in here. Can you guys see down there? Okay. And when you're doing the blending, it does not have to be perfect anywhere. Um, even if you see a little bit of brush streaking or whatever, that's fine. Just try and work it out as best you can, but it doesn't have to be perfect at all. You just, with blending, um, you know, you hear people say that blending is not just gobbing it on and leaving it. So what I've done there, blending. If you can see your lines really clearly like that, it, that's not blending, that's just putting paint on. <laughs> so blending is, is where the paints, uh, the two paints sort of become one, in other words. Okay, I'm going to clean that up a bit. All right, let's get to this. A little bit tricky doing it on an angle like this, I have to say, because I'm sort of not facing the paint where I, the way I would be. <laughs> but <laughs> hopefully you get the idea. So I'm even taking the paint up a bit into the gray and over into the end here in that gray and down here a little bit. And I can feel that the paint is not bad. So I'm gonna try and blend it a little bit here. I'm gonna go this way first. You can be kind of rough with it like this. You don't have to be. And that's kind of blending it in, in a different way. And then I'll go back and smooth it out. Every time I do that, my drawer wants to go back. So I need a little bit more gray up here again. And a little bit in here again. So I want my edges to be a little bit more defined. Um, my interior edges. So, so now my paint is getting sticky. Now it's to the point where I can't do anything. So just spritz it. Give it a little... So I'm going back and forth like this, but then I'm going to take my brush and go just end to end, just like that, and blend it out. And it looks so much different than this one. So when I go to do my last bit, I will take anything that's too light or too dark and I'll match them up perfectly. That's what you can do at the very, if you do another coat or if you, um, want to change things at the end and just kind of highlight certain areas or whatever or fix any flaws like drawers that are too too bright or too dark. I do that a lot. I get all my blending done and then I look at it and I've always got one drawer that seems not quite right so I'll just work on that one drawer. And just keep in mind if you if you go to fix a blended area you have to fix it. can't just fix one, you know, one square inch or one dab of paint kind of thing. You have to fix the whole thing. Okay. Well, I've got some paint mixed in here now. So I'm going to go back and blend it out. Okay. 
Yeah. And like I said, when it when it dries, it makes the prettiest, um, like almost like a blue jean blue. It's really pretty from the gray and the ash. So this is just ash is a dark gray. And like, look at this color. This is ash. It's a dark gray, almost black. And then this is putty, which is almost a white. <clears throat> They're both fusion mineral paint colors. But um, they dry like this. You can see this is drying now in this. Um, it almost looks like faded blue jeans. You could do a really cool blue jean look dresser with this, actually, if you wanted to. It would be really pretty. Okay, so... <clears throat> Um, now, here, there's a little bit of, of variegation uh, where the ash has hit the other paint. That's fine. I kind of like it blending into the bottom like that, so I'm just going to leave it and see how it dries. And if I really don't like it or I think it looks too smooshy, I'll go back and touch it up. But the frame, touching up any of the frame would be super fast because it's just all that one color on the frame part. Okay. I like that. That's going to be super cool when it's done. So I might do another video just on the black waxing and the and the um, stain and finishing oil over the, over the top of the ash paint. If you guys want to see that, you can let me know. And I think I've gone 25 minutes now, so I think I'm going to stop there. So I don't want to make these. But let's back it up. And you can see um, whoop, this way. Uh, you can see, <clears throat> here's something here. There's a little bit too much gray in there, so I'm just gonna blend that out a little bit more. And because my paint's still kind of damp, I can do that. But if I had let it dry already, um, I'd have to change that. Same thing with, i glue a little bit in there too. Just give it a spritz of water and it'll reconstitute the paint. And then I'll touch up any bits later. So that is that. And then I'll go back and just touch it up. So paint blending is pretty simple, but if you're using fusion paint, um, I would suggest lots of water. <laughs> um, and get a spritzer bottle like this. Don't use an ordinary spray bottle unless you can get it to do a really fine spray. But that is what it'll look like, and I will do another short video, maybe later today even, because I want to get this piece finished and up on Marketplace. Um, I'm going to repaint the frame uh, the same gray, and then the sides oh, I have also done in the... Um, this looks terrible, but that's my first coat, which is the first coat of blending always looks terrible. It just does not even look right. But I would do my dark outline where I want to put some gray in the middle and some putty in the middle and then just blend the whole thing out with water and it goes pretty fast. So I will talk to you guys later, but I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching and be sure to like and follow and share our page. Bye.